Good morning. Uh, today we're going to be continuing our walk through our study of World War I for the IB exam. And today talking about a, a few of the, uh, the smaller topics, I guess, but uh, obviously uh, impacted by the war and impacted the war. Um, we're going to talk about um, life on the home fronts um, and, and how governments were reacting. Uh, and then we're going to deal with a number of, of of the technologies that impacted the First World War um, in the air, on the sea, and then uh, some of the new developments that uh, presented themselves during this conflict. Uh, first, uh, with regard to the home front, we want to recognize that World War I is going to bring a, a tremendously large uh, growth in, in federal governments and central governments um, and more impact from those governments in the lives of regular people. Um, across Europe and even in the United States, there will be impacts uh, felt as, as governments expand. Uh, in Britain, for example, um, the concept of war socialism, where, where the government is going to expand and begin to take control over aspects of the economy, uh, taking over railways, rationing of goods, um, commandeering and uh, raw materials for armament factories, um, conscripting citizens into uh, necessary industries uh, to support the military, making strikes illegal uh, within, um, within, uh, within England. In the United States, uh, Congress in passed and the president signed the Espionage Act in 1917, essentially making it illegal to, to proclaim any support for um, enemy nations, but it was also used to, to quell any kind of dissent of the federal government. Um, in, in Germany and in France, military leaders were essentially taking control of the civilian governments. In Austria, uh, their representative body, the Reichsrat, uh, was disbanded during the war effort. We're also going to see uh, the expansion of propaganda efforts by governments to, to convince their people that this war is worthy and worth supporting. Um, much of this done through, through posters, plastered throughout towns. Um, also, uh, tremendous censorship of, of many of the letters and writings that were going back and forth between the, the soldiers and the front. And you can see a couple examples here, how some information would be, uh, would be removed as, as soldiers would write their letters home. Women had an important role to play in this war. Nothing like we're going to see in, in the Second World War is still in, in so many countries, uh, women were prevented from uh, serving in, in any kind of frontline military positions or military positions really at all. Um, but uh, women will take a far greater role in the workforce. Uh, in England, for example, 80% of armament productions in Britain were, were done by, by women as so many men had left for the home front. Uh, this uh, important push of women into the workforce and having such a vital role in the victory uh, that the Allies will experience will have a major impact on the suffrage movement in England and in the United States in the post-war year. It's going to take France uh, a few decades longer to get there. On the open seas, um, the, the, the war is going to have a tremendous impact. And, and one thing the IB is always looking for or might possibly ask is, is for you to take, uh, you know, a couple wars of the 20th century and talk about how, you know, naval, uh, the naval warfare or the air, air war um, impacted or led to a victory in that particular war. World War I, you can certainly make a good argument that the war at sea had a major impact. Um, as soon as the war began, Britain used its massive navy to, to launch a blockade of, of Germany. And, and this would prohibit or prevent uh, goods and supplies from getting into uh, to the German state. Uh, Germany, likewise, would attempt to launch its own blockade. Now, they can't blockade England. They don't have enough ships to, to surround the United Kingdom. And plus, many of their surface fleet are essentially trapped um, on their own coast. But Germany does have U-boats, submarines, um, that they will use in, in effect to try to blockade um, the, the United Kingdom and France from getting supplies from overseas. Um, the British will also be laying mines throughout uh, throughout the uh, the North Sea and and into the North Atlantic uh, to try to uh, to try to disrupt um, British or German uh, U-boats. 
Um, there's one major surface fleet battle in the First World War, and this takes place in May of 1916. It's called the Battle of the Jutland. Uh, the Jutland Peninsula is, is off the coast of, of or is the is Denmark essentially, um, and this naval battle takes place there as the German surface fleet is going to attempt to break out of the British blockade. Uh, it's an indecisive battle. Both sides claim victory, but for all intents and purposes, I think we can consider it an Allied victory because the Germans were never able to break that blockade, and and this this lack of supplies getting into Germany will have a tremendous effect on the German home front and the deprivation that those people are going to be feeling and it will certainly contribute to eventually uh, the the German high command recognizing that this war cannot be won uh, by the by the fall of 1918. Also, German U-boat uh, technology, German U-boat uh, uh, usage on the on the Atlantic Ocean sinking uh, sinking merchant vessels and passenger liners will contribute to, the, to drawing the United States into the conflict. It's one of the factors that, that helps um, the United States public push their sentiment against Germany. And ultimately by April of 1917, when Germany uh, resumes their practice of unrestricted submarine warfare, that's one contributing factor for the United States to ultimately enter the war. In the air, uh, airplanes are just not as developed um, and not going to have as major an impact on the outcome of this war. Both sides have airplanes. Uh, both sides are going to use them early in the war as reconnaissance, uh, small scale bombing, like literally pilots just dropping small explosives out the side of their plane in, in the early portion of the war. Um, as technology in the planes will improve in particular, and I'll mention it again in a moment, uh, what was called an interrupter gear, um, essentially allowing a, a, a gun to be mounted on the front of a plane to, to be timed precisely to fire through the, uh, the, the propeller of the plane, uh, which is going to make, obviously, a, a better weapon in the skies than simply what happened in the beginning of the war, where, where pilots or, or, or uh, gunners on a plane would simply be shooting themselves, hand shooting out, out the side of a plane. Um, this uh, new de development will lead to direct combat or what was known as dog fighting uh, between flyer aces um, or fighter aces. Uh, you've definitely heard of the, the Red Baron, uh, Baron von Richthofen, uh, Germany's greatest uh, uh, fighter ace uh, in the United States. Um, pilot Eddie Rickenbacker became a, became a uh, household name. Um, and, and these, while, while they didn't have a major impact on the development or outcome of the war, they were huge when it came to, to the propaganda um, war and, and the, the rallying the home front behind the stories of these, these brave pilots. Um, but, but Baron von Richthofen um, does not survive the war. Being a, one of these fighter aces um, typically ended in the death of those pilots. Uh, there would be limited longer distance bombing. Uh, Germany would run some uh, very limited air raids over, uh, over London, um, but planes couldn't stay in the air that long and they couldn't carry that many explosives. So this really did not have a major impact in the war, but it will have a major impact on the, the thinking about what the next war is going to look like. And we'll talk about that at a later date. Uh, some other technology that will be developed during this war, um, we've got uh, tanks invented by the British um, as a way to break through trench lines um, and, and go across no man's land more safely. Um, these don't have a, a major impact in the war either because they are so much in their infancy. Um, they broke down a lot, they got stuck in, in, uh, in mortar craters, um, uh, and, um, and they didn't have a major impact. And, and by the end of the war, the Germans were developing their own tanks as well. Uh, Flamethrowers were developed. Uh, poison gases, first seen at the Battle of Ypres in, in Belgium. Um, poison gas is used as an as a offensive weapon. Uh, but then, of course, that is countered by the development of, of gas masks. Um, tracer bullets, where, uh, where um, a machine gun bullet uh, will uh, be equipped with some explosive material to, to light its path as, uh, as it went across uh, 
um, across the field. So, so those shooting could know where their bullets are going. I already mentioned the interrupter gear. You see that on the lower left hand where a machine gun could be mounted at the front of a plane and fire through the nose essentially. Uh, depth charges, a, a technology, basically a, a bomb on the open seas that could be set at a certain pressure to explode underwater as a, as a weapon against U-boats. Uh, the hydrophone, um, kind of an early version of, of sonar where, um, where surface vessels could try to hear underwater where, uh, where submarines might be. And the, the early advent of, of aircraft carriers using a, a vessel with a flat deck um, to, uh, to throw some airplanes on and take the air war to the open seas. So many of these technologies, though, were so much in their infancy, none of them um, on their own really have a major impact on the outcome of this war. And in my opinion, we have to just go to that technology that existed at the beginning of the war, which was so detrimental to the outcome of the war and the duration of the war and the deaths in the war, and that is the machine gun. So that is a handful of technology that you'd be able to write about and, uh, and some impacts from the air war and the war at sea. We'll see you next time.